it is like to have family. When my twin brother and I were born, we were separated. My dad was in jail when I was born. My mom, she was on drugs. She placed us with other family members. I would often see my mom in the streets and we would literally like walk past each other. When I was nine years old, my great aunt passed away and my dad was coming to get us, but we didn't know we were going with my dad. After a while, my dad started to putting his hands on me, constantly talking down on me, constantly comparing my brother to me. I was always called a sissy. I was called all of the names. I said something slick to him. He put his hands on me and he was trying to choke me. I thought he was gonna kill me. Well, I picked up the phone and I called the police and they arrested him. We were put in the foster care afterwards. We were told that our mom was gonna come get us, but she didn't come get us. My brother, he was very mad at me because we didn't know where we were going and we didn't talk for a while. <sighs> I never had a chance to just talk about how I felt. <laughs> I just wished I was loved growing up. I remember telling my dad something slick about a remote and he came towards me and he was about to choke me. Like he was going to choke me. And he choked me and I thought he was gonna kill me. Like just the way that he looked, I saw a different person. And I was scared. So I called the police. When you called the police, what happened? Why, did, why does he think that that's the reason? Because the police saw the abuse? No, the police didn't see the abuse. I had to come up with another reason to get him in jail. The okay. police was like, well, we don't see nothing wrong with him just hitting you or choking you. And I was like... Okay. So, I, then, I had, so then what was the other reason? So I told the police, I said, if someone's growing marijuana in the backyard, what happens? Well, they can go to jail. So I told them, they tested the plant, and they took us. And so he went to jail. That's why your brother thinks it's yes. your fault. Got to understand. Um, so... It sounds like living with your dad during that time was hard. Yes. Like there was a lot of treating you bad. Yes. What do you want from your father today that I can help you with? I want him to take accountability and I want an apology. Okay. I think we run away from those things. We need to talk about it. Instead of just moving on, act like nothing that happened and all smiles. No. Understandable. Uh, most of this is lies. As I see that. So um, you, you feel you feel like yeah, everything feel he was real, saying that you heard was yeah, lies? Yeah, 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 yeah. My son could have came to me when times would come. He's saying he's scared of me and stuff like that. I yeah. was scared of you. Well, okay, you were scared. I was. What, you what, know what, what y'all did? What let's you be, did? Let's be real. What I did, I'm a kid. First of all, I was labeled at a young age. Are well, you I sissy? Don't know about that. Are you y'all? Yeah, you about know, that. know what you did I don't to know about me. That. You know what you did. Y'all used to because I was so different and not being. I was never heard. Y'all used to push me to the curb and y'all used to favor Rashard and I would say, "Well, your brother do this." No, my brother shut up and he lit up and he listened to y'all and put up with y'all. I was always different because well, I was well, not well, gonna well, tolerate listen, you with not that. Not the adult. You got to listen. Yeah, and y'all not got parents. To, just like well, he when y'all ever parents? You need to he shut up. Listened, that's your problem because now. he was scared. I was yeah, never I mean, scared. I can, that's My mouth right. got so, me places. That's how you Because act. I ain't allowed it. I didn't allow it. Yeah. Wrong how? point. Y'all don't even. You not the parent. Okay, I want to hear his side of the story if I can really no, figure out how this feels like. So tell me, from your point of view, is this your first? How long has it been since you all seen each other? Uh, five years or something. Five years. Okay. And so you said, how do you feel about what he's saying right now? I feel like it's all Talking about how I choked him and he was scared of me. I'm going to show you what I did to him. We had a confrontation coming in from the house. We was coming from somewhere. Mm -hmm. He would take my key and twist it without twisting the knob. And that would break the damn key. So I said something smart to him about that. Mm -hmm. He turned around and said something smart. And I just sat him down like this and told him, you're not going to disrespect me in my house. He got, he started hollering and crying like I shot him, ran outside with the house phone in the rain, mm -hmm. called the police, and that's what happened. He figured that they, they didn't see where I bruised him at, so he, he went to the marijuana plant thing that I had two plants about that tall in the backyard. He went to that to finally get out. He, what he didn't know was they was going to end up with some people that don't give a damn about you more than you thought your daddy didn't. It's just like, I, I could say, like, I'm not going to just, I'm children. not going to bash him. <laughs> like, I really do. But it's all about the accountability. I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You put a kid in a project's and he, and he living free, no structure, no nothing. In those times of just sitting in the projects, I was molested. 
And I feel like that play a part of my sexuality. Like, and nobody ever asked me. Like, they never sat down. Nobody, it was like, ain't nobody no, told no, me that. because y'all don't <laughs> care. Y'all just yeah, threw the word sissy, and they never care. All that I got was sissy, and I couldn't even side, tell my side. Him a sissy and stuff. I, ain't I never called him no sissy. It all every <laughs> side, mama and daddy side. They sat there and let them people say whatever they wanted about me. I was, I knew from yeah, when I was young. I knew from when I was young I was gonna be the kid that nobody liked. I never was like, it's hard out here. I got into a foster home and they they tried to show me what it was like to have a family. And in the beginning, it was so nice. I had a family, I had everything. They took me to do sports, things that I never did, travel. And I put you in sports. I was, I was up in when the I put thing, you in sports, and the you thing was, play? you didn't want to play? And the thing was, <laughs> while I was with them, I kept thinking about my mom and my dad. I said, look, these strangers and they're lesbian. They, they accepted me. I got to come out in their house. If why they can do it, why my parents can't do it? Okay. Like, come on. So you two were separated when you were put in the foster care system. What was that like for you? Uh, we were separated later on, like towards the end of the foster care system. When mm -hmm. we were separated, our relationship, like, I know we went like three months. Talk louder. We went like three months uh, without talking to each other at school. Like, every day I would see him. Yeah. And like, during those three months, I felt like, it was like, how can I say this? Uh, all right. During them three months, it was just like, I felt like he was the reason why I was, like, we was in foster care and why some of the things we went through. Yeah. Ronquan and Rashad's mother is here today in the audience. Shanika's here right now. Hello. Um, thank you for being here with us. So, I'm gonna ask you point blank. We're hearing, and you've seen the pain, why didn't you get your kids out of foster care? Because I didn't have the transportation, the ride to get up there to get them. That wasn't a good excuse. That, ain't good like, that was not, not good a good enough. excuse. I wanna talk about your actions. Yes. Can you acknowledge that maybe you, as the mother, as the woman, did not do enough for these kids and played a part into the life that they had? Because yeah. I heard you say a couple times that it's just his fault. Can you acknowledge that it was both of y'all's fault, that you played a part in it? I played a part in your life. I wish we could take it back. Whatever, whatever y'all want to do, I swear, I can't do this. You're doing a great job. No, 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 you're doing a great job. That's what I hate. Listen, I want you to know something. I know it's hard when it's like, because no one wants to be attacked right now. But at the end of the day, there's two kids up here that are like, I'm just looking for answers. And we forget that as the adults, we gotta give them those answers. We gotta give them the healings. If these kids was right now was two years old and ran in here and they were like, mom, my, my leg is cut, I'm bleeding. Are you gonna be like, I can't do this? Or are you gonna run and say, let me try to put a Band-Aid on it? Let me try to put a Band-Aid on it. Let me try to fix it. So you can do this, they need you. So you just did a great job. Your sons have said they never heard you say that you have taken I, accountability. You just took accountability. Right. Apologize. And you apologize as well. Yes. What, what, how do you feel about what your mother just said? I don't feel like it's sincere, really. I feel like she got pressured into apologizing. But like, oh, when, yeah. when, if it wasn't like, if we wasn't around all y'all, she would not say that. Yes, so I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. Because I understand that it's very easy to feel that way. And you're valid for your feelings because you go, grew up in a household where you always felt like she, what she's saying is not real, where you can't trust it. And so it's easy for you to say, well, listen, it's only because y'all are here, there's cameras here. But sometimes we have to acknowledge the little growth. Because until we can acknowledge the little growth and then say, let's see how you go from here, you're always going to always be believing the worst. You're never going to have a chance to heal yourself. So I would encourage you. I know you've been hurt before. I know you, it's hard for you to trust. But you've got to at least be able to say, all right, you know what? You said it, and I'm going to hold it from here. You can hear me? Right. Now? Yes, sir. She acknowledged and she apologized. Now, this is where you get to say, you just did that. Next tomorrow, if you don't do it again, if the next day you don't do it, now I can say now it's BS. But right now, you have to be able to say, okay, I see the little growth. Right. You understand? Yeah. She's trying to give you a little something. How do you feel about her apology, acknowledgement? I accept her apology now. Thank you. I feel I always loved my mama, even though I never really got to saw much of her, but I always been a mama's boy. 
They call me soft. They call me everything. So to hear her even just say that, that moved me because I never heard it. So it's like, I might, that might be my favorite parent, but I never have a relationship with both of them. But to hear her even just say it, that moved me. And it, it, I carry that with me because she never said it before. So I know it's not BS. She I says will. she wants to do better. I would do He's that. saying he wants to do better. Yeah, we got to we got we got to talk more on this yeah. phone, man. We got to talk, man. So I need your phone, phone number, number, man. I need to be talking to you, man, on a yeah. daily basis. Because, like I said, if I would have known back then somebody molested him, I don't know if she knew or not. No, he just told but me. But if I would have knew, ago. I would be still in prison. Yeah. That's how I feel about mine. I understand. I understand. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I get it. I get it. So, do you feel seen and heard? No. Is there anything else you feel like you need to say? Uh, there isn't really much. I just want people to, I want people to get from this is talk about it. Yeah. I feel like in a of black course. community, no one ever sit down and talk. They just yeah. move on. My friends, it feel like I'm a therapist at times, even though I'm hurt myself, but I sit and I hear my fr friends' problems, anybody I talk to, they have issues and it all stems from them, their trauma, not being able to talk. And I came here today to set the record straight for all of those yeah. foster children. It's kids that I run across. I want to show them that you don't have to be f You don't have to be like the people you came from. You can move forward, get out of that environment, and do better, because you can. It's, it's never yeah. too late. So listen, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm glad that you got what you needed from your mother and your father. At least there was a step taken today where both he, he, made, he, he acknowledged that he said things to you that was wrong. What I will say to you one thing is that you two, y'all got to communicate and stick with each other more. Your brothers, y'all got to be there for each other. Your brother had, was doing only what he thought was best to protect y'all. And I know it's hard for you because it feels like he caused certain pain in life. He didn't. He didn't. Both of your parents were in a place in their lives where they couldn't do what they needed to do, and they both have acknowledged that here today. But y'all got to be there for each other. You understand? Right. And now something for you. You're a very smart young man. You're a very smart young man. <laughs> You're a smart, <laughs> smart man. You hear me? You, you, got, you got a bright, bright, you got a future ahead of you. You understand? Like the way that your mind works, I could see you sitting in this seat one day. You hear me? Smart. Very, Very smart. smart. You understand? But I want you to take something from your dad. Your father just said he's in a space right now. He's working on his anger. He's working on trying to be there. He just reached over and is holding you right now. Use him as a guide to start to work on your anger. Be all right. You hear me? me? Because once you get that fully under control, I promise you the sky's the limit. Sky's the limit for you as well. You understand? Yeah. Come on, boss. <laughs> <laughs> How's it feel to have your father hugging you? How's it feel? How's it feel? Ron Kwan, how does it feel to have your dad hugging you? It feels good. It feel good? Yeah, it's good in my mind. You want to see him? Let's give him a hug. He's out there. Go on out there and hug your mom. Hey, come on down. He's a good man. He's a good man. He's a good man. He's a good man. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Good job. You can come on up here. You took a big first step. Thank you for being here. Thank right? you. Yeah. Sorry. No, no worries. I'm gonna apologize. You did a good job. Thank it wasn't about me. Your son got what they needed. I appreciate all of y'all taking a big step today. Yes, you two as parents acknowledging what you did and apologizing, and for you two finally being able to be heard and seen, all right? right. Y'all just keep working on this, and y'all gonna be stronger together, all right? Mm -hmm. Good luck, all right? I'm thank glad you. I got here for y'all. Yeah, all right, everyone, thank you so much for being with us. Come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. I love you all. Yeah, I got you. Up, hold up, where are you going? I know you want to watch more Karamo, so click here to subscribe and click here to watch more so we can keep talking and growing, friends. I love you.